What happens? Um, there's been a lot of talk about behavioral targeting, how data is collected on Internet users used for advertising purposes. I testified yesterday in the Senate on uh, children's online privacy, and I was actually pleased, you know, uh, hearings, uh, Senate hearings are a pretty formal thing, and you go in, you put on your suit, and you nod your head a lot. Um, <laughs> yes, Senator, no Senator, that kind of thing. Um, I was testifying before a subcommittee. A subcommittee was chaired by Senator Pryor, and we had a good exchange. But at the beginning of the hearing, Senator Rockefeller sits down at the committee table, at the you know where the senators sit, and the Senator Rockefeller is actually the chair of the full committee and one of the most senior members, and uh, he said some very strong stuff in support of privacy. And I got done testifying, and one of my colleagues who said similar things, and he looked at us and he said, I agree with you, to me, and to my colleague, and I agree with you, and to the person next to me on the other side who said things very different, he shook his head and said, and I don't agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, you know, it was kind of an exciting moment, I guess. Uh, and he's, you know, in a good position to, to pass some law. So. And is behavioral targeting sort of the object um, that's most directly in everybody's line of sight? Be now? Behavioral targeting is getting a lot of attention. The the uh, law that I was uh, testifying on yesterday was the Children's Online Privacy Protection mm -hmm. Act, which is the law from the mid 1990s that basically deals with the collection of data under uh, for kids under 13. Um, and I was arguing largely because of the uh, emergence of social network services that we really needed protection for teenagers. Um, and I said that the, um, the sort of self-regulatory approach based on privacy settings wasn't working. Uh, but I also said, you know, listen, I think, it's, uh, I think the social network services are great. I mean, you know, kids enjoy them. I don't think they should have to have a trade-off. Uh, but I do think we need some privacy safeguards. So you may see it for COPPA. Uh, you may see it for behavioral targeting. I think you'll see it also for security breaches um, because people do need to know when their data is improperly disclosed, and I think the states have done a very good job in that area. Um, there are other areas as well. DNA collection is very interesting. I don't know how many people have seen the movie Gattaca. It's actually one of my favorite movies. Um, and part of what makes Gattaca so interesting is that futurist world is so seductive, right? I mean, it's a world of technological achievement and, uh, you know, I mean, people look like Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman, you know. <laughs> who, wouldn't want to live in, who wouldn't want to live in such a world, right? Uh, but, of course, it comes at this enormous trade-off because everyone's future is largely predetermined based on their DNA. And so you really have to confront questions, you know, of freedom and morality um, in a world where you have perfect information about people uh, based on their data. Well, we're but in some respects, though, we are not from a from a biological perspective, but we are in the world of social media. We're heading into not that necessarily that much awareness, but certainly much greater awareness of what our friends are doing, who they're interacting with, what they're thinking, what they're saying, what they like, what their music tastes are, and things like that. So, the, in the life logging environment that we are now in, we're we're partly along that path, aren't we? And and and. And so I hear you saying that maybe, maybe Washington will cope with this in piecemeal fashion rather yeah. than sort of comprehensively. Yeah, I know that comes as a big surprise to a lot of people. <laughs> that, uh, although, I mean, Washington does ever so often come up with comprehensive uh, proposals. I don't, I don't mean to be too skeptical. Uh, but sometimes piecemeal is not bad either. But I will say on the social network sites, I think it's very important to distinguish what people choose to reveal to other people and what companies end up doing with the data that they collect. Um, and my own feeling about services like Facebook is I think people, you know, basically should have the freedom to make their own choices about what to reveal to others. Um, that's, you know, what freedom is about, and that's how we shape our own personalities. And, you know, people will make bad decisions, and they'll learn from them, and they'll make better decisions. And I don't have any problem with that. I mean, a lot of people, I think, you know, younger people, post stuff online when they're going through school and they post photos and you know then they begin to approach the job market and stuff comes down they clean things up a little bit and you know that's okay too um, so I would you know I don't think we need a lot of regulation when it comes to how people interact with other people um, but I do think when companies start to take that data and say well 
you know, now this person has revealed to her friend that she's really into this kind of music, or now this guy's, you know, telling his folks that he's, you know, thinking about going to Florida for vacation, and we can kind of pass that along backdoor, not directly to an advertiser maybe, but to a website or application developer, and there'll be some marketing that follows. I'm really uncomfortable with that. Um, I think there are ways to do it that are above board and that are transparent and that involve opt-in, but that's not what's happening. Um, people are revealing a lot of personal information to their friends, and that is being used, you know, very much backdoor for for marketing. 